Now, I know the society says when you're 18, you're an adult. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says you have to be 20. Give me that. You got it? Uh, one and six. Yeah, one I think it's eight. one number. Is one, one and, uh, one and six. It's up there in the chapter. You have to be. That's proof to you that what we've been learning is not what God is saying. The society says when you're 18, you're, you're an adult. That's eight. not what God says. God says 20 years and older, right? So that's why you, 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 you got some soundness in your mind. You understand? Yeah. So we must repent and change our minds to actually follow what God says. You understand? Read this. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 1 and verse 18. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names from 20 years old and upward. That's what the Bible says. 20 years old and upward, that's when you start being an adult. That's when God considers you to be doing stuff as an adult. You understand? So that's why 19, 18, y'all need to stop sleeping with each other. I'm serious. Because God, and that doesn't mean during this time, we got a school in Jacksonville. If y'all want to prove, y'all can prove, right? and learn each other, really learn each other. It's not about sex and marriage, Will. It happens, it happens, but for it to last, you have to know each other's mind, right? You have to build on something really solid because the beauty is gonna fade, right? The grades are gonna come in. Will y'all still love each other when that happens? I know youthful lust exists, right? You look good now, you look good now, everything looks good, but time changes you. And it has to be built on something that is real. Sex is not something that you build marriage on. Friendship is what you build it on. And that's how it lasts. You understand? So stop it. Read this. This is the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 9. Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of the life of thy vanity, which he hath given thee under the sun, all the days of thy vanity, for this is thy portion in this life and in thy labor which thou takest under the sun. See that? This is their portion. So you're supposed to live joyfully with your wife, right? And teach her the scriptures according to the Bible. You're supposed to, Lord's way, y'all proving up stuff like that, right? Come to the school, proving, right? And if it works out, y'all, you know, y'all met in high school or something? Yeah, right? Okay. So y'all been knowing each other for a little while? All right, so. Y'all kind of got a little friendship going on, but you haven't built it on the Bible, right? To see where her mind is and you where his mind is, right? According to what God says, because you're not supposed to be wearing pants, according to the Bible. You know that? You did not know that, right? Deut uh, Deuteronomy 22. You know, women are not supposed to be wearing pants. I know that's hard to, to, to take in, sis. I dealt with sis right to mirror right here, and it was hard for her too, right? But guess what? Every man you see out here, every male, we're wearing pants. How is it that you're wearing the same attire as, as us and you're a female? That doesn't, that doesn't line up. That doesn't even make sense. Because if, if one of us put on a dress, one of the males put on a dress, you would look at us strange. You'd be like, yo, what is he doing, right? That's women attire. That's, that's my little sister, or my little niece attire, right? That's what the woman would say, but it doesn't click in her mind that, wait a minute, I'm wearing pants, he's wearing pants. I'm not supposed to be doing that. It doesn't look crazy to you. It doesn't look off to you. Because you learned that it's okay by Christianity. Christianity told you you can do, come as you are, and Christ is going to accept you. The Bible says that when Christ comes back, the black Messiah, and he sees his children, the Israelites, dressed in attire that he says not to be dressed in, like women in pants, men in dresses. You see that they're pushing that on us, blacks and Hispanics? They're pushing man wearing dress purses, all that stuff, they're putting it on the TVs. You agree with that, right, guy? Yeah, yeah. They're pushing that. Why are they pushing it on us and not the other nations? Because they know that you are the children of God. And for them to keep making money and you in service to them as slaves, because I know you think you're not slaves. We all in this society, we have ne never been back to our homeland where we were taken of. We don't know our nationality. We don't even know the language we used to speak. We don't know none of that. We're still slaves in this land. So in order for them to keep you as slaves remaining in this land, they have to keep you in sin. Our weakness is sin. 
Sin is breaking God's commandments. One of God's commandments is women in pants, men in dresses. And we're about to read it. Read this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Yeah, I see you smiling. You know why. What does pertain to a man? Yes. You see the, the women wear basketball shirts too as, as well? You can't do that. They got a whole, uh, a whole basketball team with women wearing shorts in sin. That's right. That's not supposed to happen. God says it's against what he says. Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Because our sins is like, what about the man? Is it just us? God only picking on us. No, God deals with both, right? Because he, both of us has to get right. So you're not supposed to be wearing pants. You're not supposed to be wearing pants. You're not supposed to be wearing pants. Right. And none of us men are supposed to be wearing dresses. Right. Right? That's what the Bible says. Read. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. God says you're an abomination. He hates it. He hates you for doing that. You know what abomination looks like? Puke. God sees you and just look at you as puke, as vomit. You understand? Right. God doesn't like that because he told you what to do. That's how a lot of our women have yeast infections. Let's get real. Out. Yeast infections because you can't breathe down there. You got a pants on. You got zippers that you're not pulling nothing out of. Right? That's what those things happen. God is saying, give you the solutions to your problems. You have to apply them. Right. You don't go to school and just listen to the teacher and not say, okay, well, the teacher said two plus two equals four. I'm going to listen to that, but when I try to count my money, I'm not going to count it as two plus two equals four and I got four dollars. I'm going to do my own thing. You never do that. You listen to everything the teacher says and Lord, and you think in your mind, if I apply this and I go to college, I'm going to have a degree and I'm going to have a good job. You apply that. But for some reason, when God says it, we do not apply it because we hate what, when God corrects us. That's why we went into slavery. This is why this happened. Shipped across all the world as slaves. Lost our identity, calling ourselves Puerto Rican, black, Hispanics. God did not call us this, he called us this. That's why this happened, because we did not listen and do what God says. We hear it and we say, this sounds really good. You, 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 you broke it down. I love it. But when we leave here, we do not apply what God said. Right. You have to apply what he says because it will be for nothing. And then when Christ comes back, he's going to kill you. That's the end of the matter. Christ is not coming back to play with none of us. None of us. Right. He's coming back to judge. You know what judging looks like? Bring it up. When you go before a judge in the court, they're judging you based on the laws of the land. Right. If you do not do what the laws of the land says, you get 10 years, five years, 15 years. That's what judging looks like. But with Christ, it is eternal death. That's right. That's what God's judgment looks like. He's right. not giving you 15 years here and 15 years there. He's killing you because you're not doing what he says. That is the Bible. So we got a school in Jacksonville. I know it's an hour away, but guess what? We came out here right. so that we can give y'all the words of God. Right. And y'all can come to the school so that y'all can learn the words of God and build yourselves up and understand what Christ requires of you. That's right. So that you can be saved. Do y'all want justice for these things that happen to us? Do y'all want justice? Bring it up. We've been fighting for years. What about you? I know this looks at this African American, but in Puerto Rico they did the same thing. Where's the sign? Where's the sign? God calls you Puerto Rican from Ephraim on down. That is the northern kingdom of Israel. God did this to you. God did this to us. Both of us got it. Why? Because we did not listen to what God says. Right. Judgment came. Right. So we must get ourselves right together so we can be saved from the lands of our enemies. Everywhere they scattered us as slaves, Christ is coming back to save us. Matter of fact, go back to Luke 1 and we go end it there. Christ is coming back to save us from our enemies and to give us rulership and eternal life. But we must keep God's commandments. Read this. In the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. A lot of our people hear this, that Christ only came for you so-called blacks and Hispanics. And they do not say, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he only came for us. They do not say that. 
they say, what you mean Christ can't only come for the blacks and Hispanics? What about the white man? A lot of our people say that because they have Stockholm Syndrome. That's right. They cannot see themselves separated from their slave masters. Read it. And have raised up in horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Very possessive words. Us and we. No other nation. Us and we. God raised up Christ to save us. Read. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been here since the world began. You cannot read about a Chinese. You can't read about an Arab prophet. You can't read about none of that. The prophets you read about in the Bible are all black men. Yes, right. All of them. All of them. That's your forefathers. That's right. And they've been writing these things down for you in this time when you're in slavery that you can learn and repent and change your ways. Read. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. I got a question for y'all. Did our friends do these things to us? Bring it out. Are these friends that did this to us? So guess what? What the Bible just called them? Enemies. Enemies. God, Christ was born for that reason. That's right. To save you from all your enemies. That's why Christ is coming back. So that you can stop being oppressed, that you can stop living in the ghettos, and you can actually be back where you were, in Jerusalem, in our land. Those people over there are not the Jews. You are the Jews. You are the Jews. You are the Jews. You are the Jews. That's right. They stole your identity because you don't know who you are. Right. You call yourself black American. It's right. easy for them to to assume your identity because you don't know who you are but guess what the prophets are back on the earth That's we're looking right. at them right now That's and they're right. telling you that you are the jews and you must repent and keep god's commandments shalom israel this is bishop nathaniel i want you to know that you can view all our sabbath classes live on iuic tv that's right i said on iuic tv download the app today shalom Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Nation is you.